What you don't know about Jesus' birth. What you don't know about Jesus' birth, sacrifice from a different viewpoint. Sacrifice from a different viewpoint. The most commonly worldwide spread story of sacrifice as we all know was elicited in the story of Jesus' sacrifice of himself, to save humanity from bearing the liability of Adam's sin. Regardless of the wrongful theme of the story that a person, the claimed son of God, bears the sin of another. Revealing the oppression and cruelty of a God to let his only son suffer that much for a sin that he did not commit, I think we need to go into the meaning of sacrifice in depth. A Great Story of Sacrifice This story I am going to relate goes around the incentive for sacrifice. It is a story of a great prophet who has had a great mention the Bible, the Gospel, and the Quran. He was the father of two great prophets, he is Prophet Ibrahim Abraham. Prophet Ibrahim has been a very obedient servant to God, he believed in him alone. He challenged his father, people, even the chief of his tribe because he believed. Ibrahim had two sons, Ishak, Isaac, and Ismail, Ishmael. They both were good pious prophets who also called their people to do believe in God, but only one of them is the hero of this story. When Ismail has become a bright young man, Ibrahim had a vision that he is slaughtering his son. He saw it for three consecutive days, the thing that made him quite certain that it is a revelation from Allah, the creator of heavens and earth, carrying an order for him to do so. It is very surprising that a person accepts such an order and hastens to execute it, even if he was a prophet, because, after all, he is a human and a father who loves his son very much. But what is really astonishing is the submissiveness and obedience of this young man to his father, a young man who has not yet tasted the pleasures of life. Who has a future waiting for him to build? That scene is best described in Allah's saying. So we gave him the good tidings of a forbearing youth, Quran.com 37101. Then when he and his son reached the age of endeavoring with him, he said, Oh my son, surely I see in a dream, literally, time of sleeping, that I should slay you. So, look, what do you see? He said, Oh my I dear our father, perform whatever you are commanded, you will soon find me, in case Allah, so he decides, among the patient. Quran.com 37102 How cruel is that? One might wonder, what on earth is that religion that makes a father slay his son with his own hands? However, I am here asking you in exchange, what religion makes God let his only son to be crucified for a sin that he never committed? And here is my answer to your presumed question. The story did not have such a tragic end, for Allah has sent down a great ram to be sacrificed for Ismail in the very last minute when Ibrahim grabbed the knife, lied his son on his forehead, and was about to slay him. This is the real meaning of sacrifice, a father sacrifices his son to obey the commands of his Lord, and a pious son who submits to these commands as well. Allah says. And when they had both submitted and he put him down upon his forehead, 103, we called to him, O Abraham, 104, you have fulfilled the vision. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. 105, indeed, this was the clear trial. 106, and we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. 107, Quran.com 37. O oh my Lord. Grant me a pious child who will be a means of help for me and a substitute for me for my people in the wilderness. So I answered his supplication for him and gave him news which pleased him, when I gave him the good news of a child who would grow old and become forbearing. This child was Ishmael, peace be upon him. When Ishmael grew into a youth and reached working age, his father Abraham saw a dream. The dreams of prophets are a form of divine revelation, so Abraham said to his son, informing him of the meaning of this dream, O oh my son! Indeed, I saw in my sleep that I am slaughtering you, what is your opinion in the matter? Ishmael replied to him saying, O oh my father, do whatever Allah has commanded you to do in slaughtering me. You will find me one of those who are patient and content with the order of Allah. So when they submitted to Allah and obeyed him, Abraham laid his son down on his forehead, to carry out the order given to him to slaughter his son. I called out to Abraham while he was about to carry out the order of Allah to slaughter his son, saying, O oh Abraham. You have fulfilled the dream you saw in your sleep by resolving to slaughter your son. Just as I rewarded you by freeing you of this great trial, I also reward those who do good by saving them from trials and difficulties. Indeed, this was a clear test which Abraham passed. And I set Ishmael free in exchange for a huge ram which was to be slaughtered instead of him. I preserved good praise for Abraham to remain among the following nations. As a commemoration for Abraham from Allah and a prayer to keep him safe from every harm and difficulty. Just as I requited Abraham with this reward for his obedience, I also reward those who do good. Indeed, Abraham was one of my believing servants who fulfilled the demands of his servitude to me. 
And I gave him glad tidings of another son who would become a prophet and a pious servant, he was Isaac. It was another reward for his obedience to Allah by resolving to slaughter his only son, Ishmael. And I showered upon him and his son Isaac my special blessings and gave them both many bounties, from which one was an increase in offspring. There were those in their progeny who did good by obeying their Lord, and those who clearly wronged themselves by disbelief and committing sins. As Safet, 100-113 To surprise you even more, did you know that this sacrifice story exists in the Bible? All taught is distorted in the Bible but it was after all mentioned? In King James Version, in Genesis 22 the following was stated. And it came to pass after these things, that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up. And went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, so they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. In honoring Ibrahim for obeying Allah's commands in this extremely difficult trial. Allah has made this a sunnah, supererogatory act of worship following the example of the Prophet, for all Muslims since then till the end of this world. Not only had he made it so, but also had made it one of the greatly rewarded acts of worship. In Islam, the real sacrifice is represented in obeying the commands of your Lord, abandoning an evanescent lust, and enduring all hardships just to abide by the ordains prescribed by Allah seeking his content and recompense. This is really what sacrifice is about, submissiveness, abandonment, and obedience to an all-wise and just deity. What you don't know about Jesus' birth. The birth of Jesus was more than the account of one more human being born into this world. But its significance was felt around the world and continues to affect the lives of people everywhere till the end of time. The birth of Jesus was God's sign to people and a mercy to mankind. Interestingly, Jesus is the only one of the prophets mentioned in the Quran who is said to have had a virgin birth. The Miracle of Jesus' Creation Islam believes in the virgin birth of Jesus. The term virgin birth refers to the virginal conception of Jesus, that is, the belief that Jesus was conceived in Mary by a miraculous work of God the Almighty, without the agency of a human father. The birth and the creation of Jesus was a supernatural event and involved a special kind of birth. Now let's make a comparison between the Quranic and the biblical languages about the virgin birth of Jesus. The Quran describes that the angel appeared to Mary to announce to her that God has chosen her above the women of the worlds as stated. And, mention, when the angel said, O oh Mary, indeed Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of the worlds. Quran.com 342 Remember, O oh Messenger, when the angel said to Mary, Peace be upon her Allah has chosen you because of the praiseworthy qualities you have. He has purified you from all defects, and chosen you over all the other women of your time. Ali Imran 42 The angels come to announce to her the gift and the birth of the word of God. 
and mention, when the angel said, O oh Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him, whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus. The son of Mary, distinguished in this world and the hereafter and among those brought near, to Allah. Quran.com 345 Remember, O oh Messenger, when the angel said, O oh Mary, Allah gives you good news of a child who will be created without a father. Merely by a word from Allah, such as be, and he will become a child by Allah's will. The name of this child will be the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. He will have a high rank in this word and the afterlife and he will be one of those who are made close to Allah. Ali Imran 45 Mary's Reaction Mary was astonished at the news. Both the Quran and the Bible talk about her astonishment and her asking of how that could happen, but the answers of angels in the Quran and the Bible are totally different. The Quran states Mary's reaction to the angel's announcement of the virgin birth of her son. She said, My Lord, how will I have a child when no man has touched me? The angel said, Such is Allah, he creates what he wills. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, Be, and it is. Quran 346-47 this child will miraculously speak to people when he is a small baby, as well as when he grows up and becomes a man. He will tell them what is best for them in their religious and worldly affairs. He will also be one of those who are righteous in their words and actions. Mary was surprised that she was to have a child without a husband and said in astonishment, How can I have a child when no man has come near me in a lawful or unlawful way? The angel said to her, Just as Allah will create a child for you without a father, he creates whatever he wishes even though it may be out of the ordinary. When Allah wishes for something, he says be and it is. Nothing can stop him doing as he wills. Ali Imran 46-47 The Biblical Story of Mary's Reaction How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Luke 1 verses 34 to 35. Now let's have some insight into both answers. On the face of it, the answers appear to be the same, but if we compare closely between the Biblical and the Quranic languages, we will find that there is such a huge difference between what the Quran and the Bible are saying. When Mary asked how this will be as she is a virgin and no man has touched her, in the Quran, the angel says, Such is Allah, he creates what he wills. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, be, and it is. Quran 347 The angel said to her, just as Allah will create a child for you without a father, he creates whatever he wishes even though it may be out of the ordinary. When Allah wishes for something, he says be, and it is. Nothing can stop him doing as he wills. Ali Imran 47 On the contrary, in the Bible, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Luke 1 verses 34 to 35. Certainly, there is no suggestion in the Quranic language that Jesus was conceived through any physical relation with Mary. But in the Bible, the language is so different. The language used in the Bible and the use of words such as, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and, overshadow you, can give a chance to any atheist or agnostic to ask, how did that happen? Like a man doing to his wife. In Islam, the approach of Jesus' birth is totally clear and the Quran makes it so evident. If God wants to create millions of Jesus without a human father or even without a father or a mother, he only says to it, be, and it is. Quran 347 Adam, for example, also came miraculously from the hand of God. He had neither a father nor a mother, there was no conception. But Adam was not God or a son of God. So we see that there are differences between the person of Jesus and his birth as painted in the Quran and the Bible. But there are huge similarities too. Here are some examples. Both affirm that an angel visited Mary. Both indicate that Mary was chosen and purified among the women of the worlds. Both affirm the fact of the virgin birth of Jesus without a human father. The titles of the Christ in the Quran and those in the Bible are quite similar. Jesus is called in the Quran his word in, Quran 4 171, meaning the word of God a similar claim to Jesus describing himself. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him sent me, has eternal life, he does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. 
John 5 verse 24. Say, O messenger, to the Christians who received the gospel, do not overstep the limits in your religion and do not say anything but the truth about Allah in relation to Jesus. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is only Allah's messenger sent with the truth. He created him by his word which he sent with Gabriel to Mary, which was the word to be, and he became. It was a breath from Allah which Gabriel blew with Allah's instruction. So have faith in Allah and all his messengers without making a distinction between them. Do not say, the gods are three. Avoid saying this false statement and it will be better for you in this world and the afterlife. Allah is the only one God free of any partner or child. He is self-sufficient. The dominion of the heavens, the earth and whatever is in between the two is his. He is sufficient as a guardian to carry out the affairs of his creation. Anisa 171. Similarly, the Quran calls Jesus, the servant of Allah, Quran 1930. The servant of God was one of Jesus' favorite terms for himself, and he clearly taught that he was the person talked about in the prophet Isaiah's servant songs, written many centuries before. So we see that there are similarities between the person of Jesus as painted in the Quran and the Bible, but there are huge differences too. To conclude. God performs supernatural acts or signs to show us that he is the only one creator who deserves worship. He is the one who has unlimited power. He creates what he wants, the way he wants. Adam, Abraham, Jesus, and Muhammad are all his prophets and servants. Islam has declared that the God of the religion of Jews and Christians and Muslims is one and the same. All these signs and miracles of Jesus a peace and blessing be upon him are made to guide us to the path of God. There is no a purpose at all of these but to straighten out the way in the name of God, to serve God and worship him alone. References But was Jesus a Muslim? N.D. Retrieved January 26, 2017, from 3, 2014, December 1.